the Creality K1 Max. My full review and thoughts, some tips and tricks, and why now is the best time to pick one of these up. It's all in today's video, and it's coming up next. What's up, everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dead, and yes, it has been a minute. I've been a little bit busy here, but I wanted to finally give you my thoughts and review on a printer I picked up a little bit ago, the Creality K1 Max. So if you watched my video on my trip to Atlanta, you would know that I picked up a Creality K1 Max from a micro center, got an absolutely screaming deal on it, uh, and truth be told, it's been pretty awesome. So if you know me, you know I'm all about like silk printing and printing slow and control. So I was very, very apprehensive on getting one of these printers. When they launched it, they actually offered me a really awesome deal uh, to get the printer uh, at an introductory price. And I kind of said no. Kind of okay with that though, because going on the forums and the pages, there was a lot of issues with the first and second wave of the Creality K1 and the K1 Max. Uh, but it seems like a lot of those bugs uh, have been fixed. So before you even start printing, one of the best things about this printer is it is super fast to set up. Uh, it comes 90 to 95% assembled, other than maybe having to put a little knob on the door, uh, popping in the LCD screen, mounting your uh, spool holder for the filament on the back. Uh, it is ready in minutes. I'd say the only thing that is a little bit of a hassle, but is the most important is it has three screws uh, in the build plate that must come out. You are gonna mess your machine up if you don't take those screws out. A little bit of a pain in the butt to get out, but after you get those out, uh, you can pretty much go through the whole process uh, of setting up your printer. The great thing with this printer, it comes with all of the accessories that you need, throat cleaner for the direct drive, uh, tons of extra clips, it comes with an extra hot end, a whole spool of filament. So literally this printer has everything you need right out of the box. Uh, setting it up and everything, very, very simple. Uh, it's gonna go ahead and boot up. You're gonna have to connect to your Wi-Fi, uh, but it's gonna go ahead and initialize everything, calibrate everything, set everything up for you. There's literally nothing you have to do from bed leveling to nozzle cleaning, like I said, to initializing and calibration. Uh, it takes maybe 20 or 25 minutes and then you're ready to go. A little bit of a change of pace. It doesn't have the SD card. It actually comes with a whole USB stick, which is kind of cool. It does have some preloaded calibration STLs in there. So of course, after we got it all set up, went ahead and printed that Benchy. Myself and Darkwing Z sat back and were in awe. Crazy that it prints a Benchy in silk uh, in under 15 minutes. And uh, the quality actually came out pretty good. There's a little bit of sagging here and there, but this is printed at the highest 600 millimeters per second. The acceleration is, is absolutely through the roof. Uh, so it prints super, super fast, but still pretty good quality. I printed a couple other calibration pieces uh, just to see how it was doing. And you can see right out of the box, it, it, it just prints absolutely awesome. So a really, really cool machine. Getting into the actual printing, there was definitely a little bit of a learning curve. You know, starting off, obviously we know that this is a clipper firmware printer, so uh, you can't use every slicer out there. Uh, they really recommend using the Creality slicer, which I open-mindedly did try, not a fan. Uh, big, big tip, I would highly recommend jumping over to Orca Slicer. Uh, I did try doing the Creality slicer for a couple prints, and honestly, it seemed like no matter what I tweaked uh, on certain instances, it just did not give me as good of quality as Orca Slicer did. The biggest obstacle was probably uh, the supports. Even when I would reduce the infill, change the top Z distance, they some of them, it was just an absolute nightmare to get off. I uh, switched over to Orca Slicer and just used default settings, and it was an absolute game changer. If you guys are not familiar with Orca Slicer, uh, it does have the plug-in for the K1 Max, so uh, build plate, everything just absolutely carries over. Um, it is laid out a lot different. Me being a Cura guy, it was kind of hard to find um, you know, certain settings in there. They're there, you just have to find them. Uh, don't worry, me being a silk guy, I am gonna work on a video. Uh, for my silk settings but again just turning down some of the speeds and tweaking a couple settings here and there uh, i printed a, a ton of stuff on this um, i printed a bunch of uh, silk easter eggs you might have seen that short or even printing these at faster speed they came out awesome um, i did a dr doom in silk it came out really really good the only issue was uh the cooling so the cooling is a little bit different uh, in this machine because it is a basically an encased cavity. So uh, you can see here this Doom, it printed awesome, but there were some uh, impurities uh, where the cooling kind of bumped up and down. So that was something that I learned that you have to set the fan uh, to a certain uh, percentage 
versus a variable. So, so that was something I, I ended up uh, basically just painting uh, just to cover it up. So uh, definitely things where I'm gonna do a whole video on what I've learned from this machine. Normally that Dr. Doom helmet takes a little bit over two days, done in 22 hours, absolutely awesome. A ton of other stuff too, uh, my recent project on the Combine Soldier, uh, I printed that. A ton of other little things here. Uh, I printed a Lucas the Spider in silk, that came out really awesome. I printed a Flexi Dragon. A bunch of other things that I had uh, printed for my kids. Uh, they just came out really, really good. So, you know, doing these test prints, you know, at higher speeds, I was still doing them at, you know, four or 500 millimeters per second. It still came out really good. And it really is a testament to the evolution of 3D printing in the sense that now Clipper is here. And if you're not familiar with Clipper firmware, it really is, it's going to be the future of, of what we're using in 3D printing. The fact that it is basically going to, you know, self-scan your meshes and analyze them to really give you the best quality possible, uh, even at higher speed. You know, something that, you know, Marlin and things just weren't capable of doing. Uh, it is here now with Clipper. Of course, hats off to Bamboo because I feel like they really pushed the label when they uh, made uh, the X1C and their other printer. So obviously there's all these other companies that are gonna be coming out with different bed slingers and, and different fast printers, but Clipper really is the future and it's really changed the way um, that printing is for me. You know, I was always printing really slow and stuff like that, but uh, with this here, I'm able to tweak a couple things and still really get great quality. And overall, I've been really happy with the printer. So aside from using the Orca slicer over the Creality print slicer, a big, big, big tip I would say with the K1 Max, probably the most important is if you are doing long prints, take the top off. Uh, so obviously the chamber, it does create a lot of heat and this is a direct drive printer. Uh, I did a couple long prints and what happens is that chamber just gets so hot that the filament when it's going through uh, the extruder, it softens and gets jammed. I had it happen twice to me and I had to take the whole whole hot end assembly apart and it was great for a learning experience but an absolute nightmare because i was on probably my fourth or fifth print uh and this had happened and i was just scratching my head so after doing a little bit of digging i realized it's just better to print with the top up and truth be told i did try to print a riser that is meant to basically just allow uh heat exhaustion to come through and keep the chamber at a more stable temperature and it really didn't help. Uh, I've taken the top off. I've done a ton of prints. I've had absolutely uh, no issues with it. So aside from the fans on the printer sounding like a jet, there really is no downside uh, to taking that top off. I've had no issues uh, with bed adhesion. Uh, I typically just use auto brim on Orca. And again, I've had absolutely no issues. It really is an awesome, awesome printer. Uh, 300 by 300 by 300. So it does have a little bit bigger uh, of a build plate than the uh, bamboo tit for tat it, it is it is a very similar uh printer uh, i love the interface on it it keeps a history of what you print uh, obviously it has the wi-fi so if there's any sort of updates that the printer needs it's going to automatically do them uh, the ability to do time lapses uh, the lidar so if you get a spaghetti factory going on it will stop the print and conserve the filament for you so you're not wasting filament uh, being on the creality cloud you can upload files save whatever you want um, and then the ability to actually access it from your phone too it's just really cool it's so many things that like i when i first got into 3d printing i'm like man this would be cool if if something like this could do it and, and now here we are with the future of 3d printing so far really happy with the printer and i can't wait to see what else creality has in store the most exciting thing about this printer is creality just announced that they made an ams multicolor system obviously it is a direct competitor now for the bamboo so with your K1 Max, you're gonna have a bigger build plate and you're gonna be able to print in multicolor. Super pumped uh, for that AMS system to get released. So uh, other than that jam, which was kind of my doing, uh, I've had no issues with it, knock on wood. I'm looking forward to picking up that AMS system. And obviously when I do, I will be sure to have a video for you and share my results with you guys. I wanna thank you guys for stopping by and checking out today's video. If you liked it, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have a K1 or a K1 Max, please go ahead and share your stories with me by dropping a comment in the comment section. Do you have any tips? Do you have any tricks? Maybe things that I didn't touch on, let me know in the comment section so others know. I'm always open to your guys' feedback. I love hearing from you, so make sure you drop me a couple words and tell me what's up. Lastly, if you do enjoy all things 3D printing, cosplay, Marvel, Funko Pops, DIY, 3D print builds, all the stuff I'm doing on the channel, 
go ahead and click the subscribe button. The next video I have on deck is my Combine Soldier, which was printed on the Creole K1 Max, and I am diligently fixing it up. So that will be uh, the next video on deck, along with my probably highly anticipated filler primer test. I've been working on some pieces here, uh, doing some stuff. The weather's been up and down. We've had rain one day, super hot the next day. So it's Florida life problems, I guess. But I am working on those videos for you. So please make sure to click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, come back and see me. So much to do in so little time. So I'm gonna get moving on to my next projects here so I can bring you those videos that you guys wanna see to help you with all your 3D printing builds. Until next time, it's DW out. Later.